Welcome to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen. And I'm David Kerr. And we're going to be looking at topics that are of interest to our community, both regionally and to the state. Hello, I'm David Kerr, and welcome to Rappahannock Issues. Today we have a special treat. We're going to talk about a program that just about everybody has some part in, and that's the Social Security. Uh, Social Security. We have two representatives from the Social Security Administration with us today. We have uh, Inez Lloyd and uh, Jackie uh, Weisgarber, and they'll be talking to us about Social Security retirement, uh, SSI, supplemental income, and the disability programs. One thing I, uh, I don't think many people realize is just how old the Social Security Administration really is and the benefits that they receive. It goes back to the 1930s. That's right. It's 81 years old this year, David. So that goes back to the uh, Franklin Roosevelt's administration. That's right. That's, that's right. FDR. The New Deal. That's right. Well, the one thing I, most people know uh, Social Security uh, in terms of the retirement benefits. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about how that program uh, is administered and how, uh, how it works? Sure. Retirement, of course, is just one of the programs that we administer, probably the most popular. But the basic requirements for retirement are, number one, you only need to be 62 years old, and you must have worked at least 10 years under Social Security, 10 years of covered service. And that's it. And so, now... <laughs> I understand that there are different levels of retirement at 62. If you retire a little later, perhaps you don't have the, uh, you can get different level of benefits, am I right? That's right. That's right. That's correct. Uh, David, at 62, if someone were to file for Social Security retirement, their benefit would be reduced by 25%, whereas if they waited until their full retirement age, which for most people right now is 66, they would receive their full benefit. And even past 66, if they delayed their retirement to age 70, they could receive 32% on top of the 100%. So technically 132% at age 70. Right. Well, that's thing of an argument to be made for continuing to work. Well, lots of options, So Lots of options anywhere between 62 to 70. So what's good for one person is not necessarily good for another person. Henceforth, we have all of these different options. Well, one thing I, uh, I think uh, I, I know I don't quite always understand is, is that when people are uh, paying into the Social Security uh, system for their retirement benefits, it's an employer-employee mix, isn't it? That's right. How does that work out? What, what, what's the distribution? Well, each one will pay 7.65%. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at $100, you're looking at $7.65 per hundred for both the individual and for the employee. And uh, if I'm an employer, uh, I, if I, I know people have to register with Social Security. If I'm an employer, I have to make certain filings to pay my employees as well, right? That's right. So it's a two, two, two group participation, as it were. Right. And if you're self-employed, then that uh, business That's a good question. pay... The business would actually pay both parts, both the employee and the employer part, so a total of 15.3% if you're self-employed. One question I've had, uh, if somebody retires say, at age 62 or anywhere up that chain all the way to 70, uh, can they keep working? Sure. I, I know there used to be a cap on it. There still is, yes. David. Uh, the cap for someone who's under their full retirement age, it's $15,720. And if you go over that, we simply withhold $1 for every $2 that you go over. So you can still work and get your Social Security benefits as long as you don't go over certain limits. Well, now, I say I'm a, a young person, uh, which I'm not, and, uh, <laughs> and I want to say I'm 30, 35, and I'm looking at my retirement. It's not a bad time to be considering these things. Uh, and I want to find out, well, how much... If, assuming I continue to work and I contribute to Social Security, uh, how much will I be paid when I'm 62 or 63? How, how does somebody find out about that? Is there anybody to talk to? or is there David, we're so glad you asked that. <laughs> you are. <laughs> we 
we are really glad that you asked that. Um, we have a world-class website, www.socialsecurity.gov. And if you go to that website, even if you're 21, you can get an estimate as to how much your benefits would be. And remember, it's not just about retirement benefits, because some folks don't get to make it to retirement. Some people die, and they have families, and then some people become disabled. So, you know, I think that a young person should go there to our website and create a My Social Security account so that they can just plan for themselves and they can plan for their families and they don't have to guess about it. You know, the answers are actually there on the website. So you just go to the Social Security website, you set up an account. That's right. And I can get the whole profile of what my... Everything. Absolutely. It used to be where the agency would mail you know, millions of I remember getting those. statements. Yes, the green and white, you know, paper mm -hmm. statements. And at the top, it lists all the different classes of benefits, retirement, disability, survivor benefits, what you would receive at a certain point. And all of that is online now. So we, we've saved a lot of money, yes. um, you know, with, with having this available online for people to uh, view themselves versus us having to mail to every individual. And you can look at it at any time. Before, when we mailed those statements out, you know, you would only be able to view that when you got the statement in the mail. But if you can't sleep at night, David, worried about this, you just, sometimes people do. <laughs> you just go to www.socialsecurity.gov, set up that account. If you haven't set it up already, if you've already set it up, you can just go in there, take a look at it. And you also want to make sure that your earnings are right. Well, that's a question I, I had about that. I've, I've heard, it hasn't happened to me yet, because fortunately the Social Security Administration did a very good job of tracking all my jobs, yeah. as it does with a lot of things. <laughs> um, and that is the people who find out that somebody, or through error or intent, uh, might have used their Social Security number, and uh, you, know, you might be a New York housewife and find you were doing heavy construction work in Minnesota. Right. <laughs> Uh, and of course, you go, you, that's, not, that's not part of your account. Uh huh. How do they? How, how does uh, somebody uh, in that position who's found something on there that really shouldn't be there uh, deal with it? Who do they talk to? That's a that's a really great point. So I I used to work in the field as a claims representative, and that is one question that we will ask uh, the claimant when we're assisting them with their retirement claim: Is do you believe? When you look at your earnings statement, is all the information correct? And we actually can show them uh, their, their earnings statement. And if there's a gap, if there's a duplicate posted earnings, um, that's something we can look at. Mm -hmm. um, we do ask the individual to provide us uh, the information so that we can correct it. Mm -hmm. um, but if that is uh, not available because it may be from several years ago, um, I've seen uh, missing earnings going back to the 70s, you know, um, wow, before so the beginning. Yeah. Many, many, many years ago, before my time, <laughs> uh -huh. um, we can investigate that and try to assist the individual and locate those earnings. That, right, and if I might add oh, yes, something please. else with that, David, you know, before when we were sending out the statements um, on an annual basis, we were sending those statements out. The purpose was twofold. One purpose was for planning purposes, mm -hmm. okay? And the other was to make sure that what was on there was right. For example, there are trends in earnings. Normally, when you start working, it's anticipated that your earnings are going to go up. So if you that's, see... That's the hope. Right. Yes. <laughs> so you want to see a trend where your earnings are going up, okay? And then if you see that, hey, there was a big drop in my earnings for this particular year, and you are not able to attribute that to something like, oh, you know, that's the year I broke my leg and... Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't go to work, or with women, oh, that was the year that Bobby was born. Right. Okay? So if you're able to attribute a decrease or a gap, that's fine. But if you know that you've been working someplace for 10 years straight, and there's a missing year in there, then you definitely want to do something about that. And in my own case, actually, I, I worked for an organization where I switched from one payroll office to the other, uh -huh. and they had a six months that just didn't get properly recorded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We straightened that out. Uh, I, my employer did, but, uh, and that, but that was way back in 1982. So <laughs> you got to think about these things. Well, and it's so mm -hmm. important because we take the highest 35 years of a person's earnings to determine what their Social Security oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, yes. Yes. Could you tell us a, 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's that's something I, I, I did not. You know, in computing the social security oh. benefit, I never really considered how it was done. Oh, we knew you were going to ask that. Well, uh, okay. read minds. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, this is a complicated program. Yeah. All right. Remember, we said that you only needed ten years of covered wages to qualify for a benefit. Okay. But when we compute your monthly benefit amount, David, guess what? We're going to look at your highest 40 years. Then we're going to drop out the lowest five. And then we're going to average all of those earnings and divide it by 420 months. And then there are certain then points that we apply at three different points. So it's a complex computation that we do. So if you've only got 10 years of work under Social Security, when we compute your monthly benefit amount, we're going to average in 25 years of zero. Very nice. Is that nice? That's nice. <laughs> and I'm going to, we're going to talk some more about the calculation of benefits and other programs at the Social Security Administration in just a moment. Come right back with us. <laughs>